Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Superman at Clark Kent unwittingly places the unsuspecting Mary Hennig squarely in the path of a violent death. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, uh, you're collecting those swell pet prizes, aren't you? The model planes, the full-color pictures of birds, or, or comic buttons to pin on your jacket or your beanie cap? Well, by now, you must have quite a flock of them, because, of course, there's a prize in every single package of pep you open. And they sure are swell prizes, all three kinds. For instance, in your next package of Kellogg's Pep, the Sunshine Cereal, you may find a colored cardboard model of a famous fighting plane, one of seven in the great Pep Air Fleet. Or uh, you'll find one of 24 beautiful color pictures of birds with a full description so you can identify these birds anywhere. Or you'll find one of a grand series of 18 colored comic buttons with characters straight out of the funnies, just as if Pep's golden crispness and, and sunny flavor weren't a prize all by themselves. Why, Pep's so strictly terrific tasting that a bowl of those crunchy golden whole wheat flakes makes breakfast a regular fun feast. You get that catchy pep flavor, and bingo! Your spoon just naturally dips down in your bowl for more. So ask Mom to get you a supply of Kellogg's Pep tomorrow, first thing. And say, gang, next week I'm going to have some terrific news about something that you're going to want to have. So don't miss Superman. And now the adventures of Superman. Faced with a long prison term on the charge of passing counterfeit money... Young Mary Hennig, reformed juvenile delinquent and part-time employee of the Daily Planet, undertook a dangerous mission in an attempt to prove her innocence. Pretending to have returned to her former dishonest ways, Mary sought employment in a messenger service conducted by a man named Pearlie, one of whose boys had given her the counterfeit money. But the girl incurred Pearlie's suspicion when she telephoned Clark Kent, and as a result, was fired. Despite Kent's objections, Inspector Henderson insisted on raiding Pearlie's office. Not knowing that Pearlie had told a henchman... If the cops raid this place, we'll know the Henny kid tipped them off. And we'll get her before she can testify against... As we continue now, unaware that he is about to sign Mary's death warrant, Inspector Henderson is in a police car with Sergeant Healy, en route to Pearlie's office. Listen. You figure this Pearlie guy's putting counterfeit money around through these messaging kids, is that it, Inspector? Well, that's what Mary Henny says, Healy. If she's lying, she'll go up for a long stretch. She's on probation now, you know. Yeah. Well, I sure hope this trip pans out. You see the afternoon papers? Uh-huh. How do you like that mayor? Giving us 48 hours to get those counterfeiters. How does he get that way? Doesn't he know we've been breaking our necks for weeks trying to find that gang? I don't know. But this may be the payoff at last, Healy. I sure hope so. Imagine Clark Kent trying to talk me out of this race. Kent did. Why? Oh, just one of his cockeyed notes. Hey, look out, Healy. In front of you. Gosh, I'm a creep. Look, Inspector. It's, it's, it's Superman. Sorry to startle you gentlemen, but this is urgent. Well, I'll be hanged. It is Superman. Right. Mind if I get in? I'll attract too much attention standing in the street. No, no, no. Come on in. Come in. Thanks. Hey, listen. What's the idea? I'll be brief, Inspector. I've just looked over Mr. Pearlie's office, the reliable messenger service. You have? Why? Well, that's where we were going. I know you were, but I can save you a lot of trouble. My search proved there is no counterfeit money in Pearlie's office, nor is there any equipment for making money. There isn't? No. But why... Take my word for it. My hunch is that Pearlie suspected Mary Hennig might tip you off, and he cleaned out all the evidence in anticipation of a visit from you. Why, that's what Clark Kent said. Listen, Superman. What? How did you know about Pearlie and Mary Hennig? Why, uh, uh, Kent contacted me a few minutes ago. How? Oh, Kent did. He said he was sure Pearlie would expect you and suggested that your raid would only drive him and his associates undercover. So that you never get the goods on them. Yeah, but that's a Please lot don't of think I'm trying to tell you how to run your department, Inspector. But if you'll take my advice, you'll go back to your office and listen to Kent. He has a plan to suggest, which I think might work. Well, if you say so, Superman. Thanks, Inspector. I don't think you'll regret it. I've got to be going. Oh, uh, thanks for the assist. Don't mention it. Good luck. Up and away! <laughs> You can 
Well, your idea to Superman, Ken. I guess the least I can do is listen to it. Thanks, Inspector. Here's what I have in mind. First, we've got to get Mary Hennig back into Pearlie's good graces so she can go on with what she started. Uh-huh. Then, when she finds out where he gets his phony money and who are the people higher up, you swoop down on them and break the ring. Yeah, that sounds good. But how are we going to do it? You know Pearlie fired Mary because he's suspicious of her. Yes, I know, but I want you and Healy to pull a little raid on Pearlie. A friendly raid, so to speak. Are you so... nuts, Kent? Why? You did your best to talk me out of a raid, well, and now wait you're a minute, trying... Wait a minute, let me explain, Inspector. The idea is for Mary to... Reliable messenger service. Pearlie speaking. Hello, Mr. Pearlie. This is Mary Henning. Who? Mary Henning, you know, Chicky. Oh. Look, kid, I told you I'd call you when I wanted you. So don't bother calling me. Wait, Mr. Could... Pearlie. I'm downstairs, see? In the lobby. I don't I care just... where you are. I'm busy now. Wait, so... will you? I just saw Inspector Henderson. You saw who? Inspector Henderson. I was on my way in to see you to ask for my job back. And I saw him get out of his car with another cop. I know him on account of the time I got arrested. You saw him get out of his car where? Right here in front of your building. He went in the lobby, and the dick with him looked at the directory on the wall. He said, here it is, reliable messenger service, room 922. He did, huh? Yeah. They're right on their way up to the elevator now. I thought I'd better tip you off in case. Much obliged, kid. Maybe you'll hear from me later. Inspector, are you satisfied there's no counterfeit money on my premises? Or do you want to uh, rip up the carpets? No, I don't think that'll be necessary, Mr. Furley. Looks like this was a wrong steer. Sorry to bother you. That's all right. But I'd like to know why you picked on my place, where I run a legitimate messenger service. Oh, I'm sure you do. But you've probably read in the papers about a counterfeiting gang operating in Metropolis. Why, yes, I have. But well, two youngsters who tried to pass counterfeit money in a department store were traced to this neighborhood. Well. They got away, but we've been keeping a lookout for them. Now, a lot of youngsters were seen coming in and out of this building, so we investigated and discovered there was a messenger service here. We just popped in on the chance, that's all. I see. Well, I won't bother you again, sir. Sorry I did this time, but you know how it is. Police can't afford to overlook anything. Sure, I know. No hard feelings, Inspector. Good. So long, Mr. Perley. Come on, Hughie. Hey, goodbye, Inspector. <laughs> the dope. Okay, Herman. You can stop making like a bookkeeper. They're gone. Dirty cops, I hate them. Oh, you hate everybody, you old sourpuss. No, I don't hate you, boss. <laughs> Good thing you don't, or I'd find a knife in my ribs. But you got to admit you were wrong this time. About what? About that chicky kid. You were sure she was working with the cop. And I still say she is. Are you nuts? I told you she tipped me off Henderson was coming here. Yeah, I can't figure that out. But I still say she's a double crosser, and I can tell, boss. Never mind. Come on, now, we got to work fast. Work at what? Packing. We gotta move out of this place. Move? Why? Why? Because of the cops, you dope. They were here once and they might come again. Especially if they're watching this neighborhood. Oh. You don't mean we're gonna. No, have... we're going to a different neighborhood, that's all. Also, I'll have to build up a whole new organization. New kids. We can't take any chances. We don't know which two kids the cops spotted and trailed. Uh, maybe it was that uh, Biff Morgan kid. You better get rid of him anyhow. He knows too much. Biff's all right. He's the only one I'll keep. Him and Chicky Henny. Chicky? Oh, no. You don't want her, boy. She's a double-crosser, I tell you. I have all the stubborn guys. Didn't she just prove she was okay? Uh, not to me, she didn't. Listen, boss, that kid is poison, I'm telling you. And I'm telling you, you're all wet. She proved she can be depended on. And what's more, she's smart. Now, come on, start packing. Oh, boss, please listen to me, will you? Don't have nothing to do with that Chicky kid. I won't let you. You won't let me. Since when are you giving orders? I know what I'm talking about. You don't know your ear from your elbow. Shut up now and get to work. We gotta move fast. The big guy says he turned out a big print run of a lot of hot money. We gotta get rid of it. Fast. Hello? Is that you, Chicky? Oh, yeah. Is this Mr. Perry? Never mind the name. Did I wake you up, kid? Oh, me? Nah, I don't go to sleep so early. Uh, what's in your mind, Mr. Pearl? No names, I said. Listen, kid, I'm making some fast changes. I got a special job for you. There's real dough in it for you, too. Are you interested? Am I? And how? Just give me the chance. That's the way to talk. Okay, get this. You know where the Adams Hotel is on 4th Street? Sure, sure I know. All right. Meet me there in a the coffee shop right away. You bet. I'll be right over. 
Dressing hurriedly, Mary Hennig leaves the small apartment, moving quietly so as not to awaken her mother and younger brother and sister. What is the special assignment which Pearlie has for her? And what further trouble will it lead her into? We'll return in a moment with the tense climax of today's episode. So stand by. You know, gang, it's always a good idea to get up in plenty of time in the morning so that you don't have to hurry with that breakfast bowl full of Kellogg's Pep. Because Pep is so good, you want to get the full golden toasted flavor in every spoonful. Yes, sir, you don't want to skip one bit of the fun of eating those crisp, catchy flakes of whole wheat. So tomorrow morning, just hitch up your chair and settle down to some mighty smooth eating with Pep, the sunshine cereal. Is it delicate and light? Does it taste terrific? And do you get a swell surprise when you see the nifty prize in each pet package? A real surprise of a prize. Could be you'll find a model fighting plane in colored cardboard, one of seven great pet planes you can collect. Or could be you'll find one of 24 new full-color bird pictures with a description on the reverse side so that you can be hep on birds. Or could be your next pet prize will be one of 18 bright-colored comic buttons sporting a famous comic strip character like Periwinkle or, or Harold Teen or Superman himself. So start collecting all three kinds of these keen pep prizes. Ask Mom to get you a supply of Kellogg's Pep from the grocer tomorrow. And keep in mind that big news I promised you. Be sure to listen in on Monday, because this is something you won't want to miss. Due to the successful operation of Clark Kent's plan, Mary Hennig is once more back in the good graces of Mr. Pearlie, who summoned her to meet him in a coffee shop late at night. As we rejoin her now, Mary has just left the hall of her tenement building and is walking up the dark, deserted street to the bus line three blocks away. She does not look behind her. But even if she did, it is doubtful if she would notice the dim, stooped figure of Herman, Pearlie's ape-like henchman, who slips noiselessly behind her, keeping in the thick shadows of the tenements overhung with rusty fire escapes. Grasped in one of Herman's huge hands is the bone handle of a long, thin knife, the blade of which is hidden in his sleeve. His thick, loose lips move as he mumbles to himself. Boss wouldn't listen to me. But I know. This kid's a double-crosser. And I gotta get rid of her so she can't get us into no trouble. Closer, Herman approaches behind the unsuspecting Mary. And closer. Now only a half dozen paces behind her. He slips the knife out of his sleeve and it gleams in the pale moonlight. As Mary, still unconscious of her danger, walks unconcernedly on. Has Mary Hennig, seeking to clear her name and avoid a prison sentence, only succeeded in stepping into a death trap? Oh, and what can save the young girl now? Monday's thrilling episode tells the story, gang. So don't miss it. Tune in Monday, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. When you shiver out of bed on a frosty morning, gang, that's Crumble's weather. That's when you want a toasty kind of cereal with zip and go. Kellogg's Crumble's. Just the name makes you think of toasty words like crisp, crunchy, crinkly, Crumbles, sort of sweet and mellow rich. The only cereal in the whole wide world made in those crinkly shreds of real whole wheat. You bet, gang, this is Crumbles weather. Time for crisp, crunchy, crinkly, Kellogg's Crumbles. And be sure to be with us on Monday for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.